There was some media report today about Jared Kushner's made all this money since he left the White House. I'm like, he was rich before he was in the White House. Probably lost money going to the White House. <laughs> That's not true. That's buffoonish and ridiculous. What would you expect? It's Laura Ingram. But at a base level, her argument there is, huh, you know, like we're populists and we hate the elites. We don't mind if people enrich themselves in office if they were already rich. So like it's only corruption if a poor person gets into the bureaucracy and suddenly strikes it rich. I don't understand that literally at all. But the report that she's talking about is not that he made the money fundamentally. We all know that he cashed in on the fact that he'd been in the White House. It's obvious corruption. No, the report is that he's now being investigated for it. And that potentially could be bad news for Jared Kushner because this entire thing stinks to high heavens. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Listen, in order for the damage report to keep on going, we need viewers like you to become a member on YouTube. Can you click the join button on YouTube today? Thank you. And we're gonna get to that, but I wanna focus on the fact that that money in particular doesn't bother Laura Ingram, doesn't bother JD Vance, both people who masquerade cosplay as populists. But I'll remind you too, that the fact that he's getting that money from the butcher, Mohammed bin Salman, that doesn't bother Jared Kushner at all. Remember this? After the Jamal Khashoggi murder, some some either gave money back or stopped. At the time, you didn't really. You said you wanted to wait for the DNI report, for for the kind of official report, for the State Department report, before talking about it. You kind of only give uh, very glancing mentions in your book to it. The DNI report came out a couple of weeks after you left the White House. It says that MBS personally was responsible. Do you agree with the DNI? Do you or do you believe that report? Are we really still doing this, Dan? I mean, yeah, okay. absolutely. Oh, the sheer mediocre entitlement. Are we, are we still doing this? I'm a billionaire. And you're going to talk to me about the fact that I accepted these billions from someone who greenlit a person being chopped into little pieces. All right, come on. And that's Jared Kushner. He's being totally honest there, by the way. He goes on to say, oh, I, I haven't read the DNI report. I guess he's been very busy cashing in, uh, working with mass murderers because that DNI report at the time of that interview had been publicly available for three years. I think it's not that he hasn't read it, it's that he doesn't want to read it and he doesn't care because he likes the bloody money that he's getting. And there was more from that interview that I think is worth reminding you of. Take a look. Were you at the time concerned about taking money from PIF? And if you could do it again, would you have done it at all differently? Yeah, so uh, PIF is one of the most prestigious investors in the world. Every fund manager is trying to work with them. I think what's happening in Saudi Arabia is one of the most exciting transformations that we're seeing now in the world of, of a country. And if you ask me about the work that we did in the White House, uh, for my critics, what I say is point to a single decision we made that wasn't in the interests of America. Okay, I'll point to one. How about letting an ally kill a Washington Post columnist, Jared? I don't, I don't really love Jake Tapper, but I wanted to include that because that's a good point. Uh, there are others, certainly. And honestly, like the stuff that they did for Saudi Arabia, which was already buffoonish and the weird orb and the, the weapons deals and turning a blind eye to the, the, de the, the devastation in Yemen and all that. We could go through all of the stuff that they've already delivered for the Saudis. But the argument about the corruption of him getting all of that money, and we'll get more into that, is not really about what they'd already done. It's about what they will do. They want to have their hooks in Jared Kushner and his family, Donald Trump, going forward so they can continue to get stuff from them. That is the actual argument that's being made. And I'll also just remind you that the idea that they went broke while they were in office being given forward by Laura Ingram is absolutely ridiculous. They apparently reported between 172 and 640 million dollars in outside income while working in the White House. They were only there for a couple of years and they made the better part of a billion dollars. Laura Ingram, you want to you want to read that or is it like the DNI report and you just you don't on time? I don't think I don't think she's going to read it. But anyway, the Senate Finance Committee is looking into this. So Ron Wyden asked Kushner's firm Affinity Partners for details about the $2 billion investment. And I want to remind all of you that there is a reason this is considered so suspicious. And it isn't just that it's a, a massive transfer of money to someone uh, obviously very closely related to Donald Trump. It's also that he's not even really an investment guy. 
He was born into a family of real estate people. He sets up this company. He gets virtually every cent that he has from outside the United States. United States investors have no interest in putting their money with him because he doesn't know what he's doing. It's not what his training is. And interestingly, that was basically what the Saudis thought too, not MBS. He obviously wants connections with Donald Trump. But the sovereign wealth fund like managing board that's supposed to evaluate the risk of different investments looked into him, looked into his experience, and they were like, no, we obviously shouldn't give him the money. And MBS personally greenlit it in the same way that he personally greenlit the, the murder of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. So um, he, he takes a personal interest sometimes. For some reason, that doesn't bother Jared Kushner, but it does bother uh, Ron Wyden. It does bother the Democrats. It bothers me. And hopefully, they will really look into this. I mean, aspects like the huge management fee that they were getting and the fact that the firm's operations were apparently classified by the Saudis as unsatisfactory in all aspects, the huge risk to losing the money, the massive investment without any prior investment history. A lot of this is incredibly suspicious. And so I hope that they uh, really delve into this. Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.